In the previous video, we created the structure of our application. Now we are ready to run it for the first time. To generate and execute the application for the first time, you only have to press S5 and the following dialog box will be displayed. If you don't have a Genexus user account, you can create it one right now or log in if you already have one. Genexus will log into our account and we can press F5 again in order to generate the application. Genexus has evaluated the impact of the new definitions in the knowledge base and shows a report called Impact Analysis. This report shows us which structural changes must be made in the database. Note that in this case, the main title informs that the database tables will be created. By clicking on each table, for example, on product type and product, you'll see in the right window the attributes that will be included in each one of these tables. As I explained before, the product type name attribute is not included in the physical table that will be created and named product, even though you included it in the product transaction structure to show its value in the web interface of the transaction. If you agree with the impact analysis displayed, you can click on the Create button and Genexus will start creating the programs needed to create a database, as well as the tables with their structures in that database. Next, Genexus executes those programs and after creating the database and the tables, it will generate all the necessary lines of code in the selected programming language. In this case, it was .NET by default. The application obtained will allow users to insert, update and delete product types and end products. You are then informed if the result was successful or if there were any errors or warnings. Here is the application running. The web browser is open by default, showing a simple page that offers a quick way to execute the defined objects. This simple page, called Developer Menu, is for developers, as indicated by its name. Of course, it's not what users will see on screen. Right-click on the product type link and choose to open it in a new tab. This page allows the users to add, update and delete product types. Let's enter the first product type. Since the product type code attribute has the auto number property set to true, it won't be necessary to enter a value for the identifier because it'll be numbered automatically. So let's enter the cosmetics product type name. After end product type name and clicking on the confirm button, this message will be displayed to inform that the data was added successfully. The page will be cleared and ready to enter another product type. Let's enter the second product type, for example, medicines. We click on the confirm button and then we can browse the data to confirm that it's numbered. We have cosmetics with one and medicines with two. Now let's execute the product transaction. To do so, we select the browser tab where the developer menu page is displayed and then we execute the transaction. Let's add the first product. For example, we will enter the code 101010. For the name, we'll enter star muscular pain medicine. As price, we'll enter stock 120. Then we must indicate the type of product. If you remember the code, you can enter it. Otherwise, we can select it from a list by clicking on this arrow. We can see that it offers the two types of products that we created before, cosmetics and medicines. For this particular product, we'll select medicines and confirm. Now, let's try to delete the product type medicines. Go back to the product type tab and click on Delete. A message informs us that the deletion can't be performed because related data exists in product. The reason is that the star muscular pain medicine is a product that belongs to this product type. Our application is taking shape now. In the following, video, the following videos, we'll continue developing it.